My name is John Mee, I'm a veterinary surgeon at Chagas Moor Park. On this board I'm dealing with herd health. I have three take home messages. The first one, dairy herd expansion will increase your risk of disease spread. Two, you can reduce this risk by drawing up a herd health plan with your local vet. And three, that herd health plan has three components. Firstly, know your own herd health status. Secondly, don't buy in disease. And thirdly, control the spread of disease on your farm. I'll go through these three components on the board. The herd health plan. It's critical that you deal with your local vet to get advice specific to your farm. The first part of the plan is investigating your herd health status. The second part is preventing the introduction of disease. And the third part is preventing the spread of disease on your farm. It's critical to monitor this farm plan over time. So dealing with the first part of the plan, knowing your herd health status. Your herd health status is broken up into two components, the risk factors for disease on your farm and the prevalence of disease in the country. Risk factors are things like, for example, having a waterway running through your farm. This increases your risk of, for example, leptospirosis. Having numerous dogs running free on your farm, this increases your risk of, for example, neosporosis. So individual farmers have individual risk factors. Then the prevalence of disease. Some diseases are more common than others. So for example, BVD is very prevalent in the country, but Yone's disease is not as prevalent. So the risk factors vary with the prevalence of disease. So the first thing you can do to determine your herd health status is diagnose sick animals. So for example, if you have an animal that aborts a fetus, rather than disposing of the fetus through a knackery, the fetus should be sent to a vet lab to have a diagnosis conducted to determine what's the possible cause of the abortion. So this will establish that you do or don't have certain bacteria or viruses that cause abortion on your farm. The second thing you can do is screen your herd. There are now new laboratory tests available that allow you quite cost effectively to determine do you have certain infections on your farm or not. So this can involve sampling weanling cattle from approximately 9 to 18 months of age, blood sampling a small sample of those to determine is the recent active infection on your farm. So you could do this for example for BVD, for IBR, for leptospirosis. If this shows up that there's likely to be infection on your farm, you can go further and examine your adult stock. And there are now excellent bulk tank milk tests available that can screen the herd and tell you the risk of having these viruses or bacteria on your farm. If you're getting results back from laboratories, it's critical that you discuss these results with your local vet to interpret the findings specific to your farm. If the screening test indicates that there is an infection on your farm, your next step is to determine which individual animals on the farm are infected. And to do this, you test individual cattle, and critical cattle to test would be cattle you purchase, cattle that are positive from a screening test, and newborn calves. And you can do this with milk, blood, or more recently, there's an ear tag available that will allow you to take a sample from the ear of a newborn calf and tell you whether it's infected with BVD virus or not. So this is how you determine your herd health status. Having determined your herd health status, you then want to protect your herd health status. And the way to do that is not to buy in disease. We know from surveys that approximately 10 to 20% of farms only are closed. The remainder of dairy farms are open. That means they buy in. So how can you reduce your risk if you are going to buy in in an expansion era? The first thing is buy from as few source herds as possible buy from source herds that are themselves closed, buy from source herds that have a low disease risk. These are typically small herds, herds that don't have imported cattle, herds that have not been depopulated for disease previously. These are all factors that reduce your risk of buying in disease.
For the cattle you choose to purchase, it's preferable to choose young cattle. They're less likely to have problems of the aged animals, such as mastitis and lameness. It's preferable to choose non-pregnant cattle because you can't test the fetus in a pregnant animal, so it's safer to buy an animal when it's not pregnant. And it's preferable to buy animals when they're not lactating because it's easier to quarantine them on your home farm. When you decide to purchase, there are a few facts that you can take into account to reduce the risk of bringing in disease. The first is ask the farmer you're buying from what's the disease history on the farm. This is critical for diseases such as Yone's disease where the tests are not sensitive. So disease history is critical for some diseases. You need to clinically examine the cattle you're buying so that they don't have visible diseases. For example, ringworm in calves. Cattle should be quarantined on the farm when you bring them in for at least 30 days and if they're pregnant animals until they calve down. This is to prevent them aborting on your farm and spreading disease to the rest of your stock. In addition, you can test the animals you buy either before you purchase them or after you purchase them. And common things to test for would be that if you're buying a bull, they should always be tested for BVD virus. There are other tests that can be ducted on uh, cattle you buy and you should discuss these with your local vet. And the last thing you should do when you purchase cattle is medicate them to the same level as your own stock. So if you treat your animals for fluke or lice or worms or you vaccinate them, you should do exactly the same with the cattle you purchase to create the same herd health status in the purchased as the homebred cattle. So this is reducing risk at purchased. And the last part of the plan is reducing spread of disease on your farm. And one way to do this is to vaccinate. And we know from surveys that 87% of dairy farmers use at least one vaccine. And this graph here shows the various vaccines that are used on dairy farms. The first point to make is that vaccines do not replace herd health planning. They're a part of a herd health plan and only that. So the most common vaccine used is for leptospirosis, 60%. Leptospirosis is a disease that can cause infertility, abortion, and critically, it's a zoonosis. So this is a disease that can affect you, your family, or your farm staff. So it's a very good reason why you should be vaccinating against leptospirosis. The other diseases here, black leg, BVD, salmonella, <coughs> diarrhea, pneumonia, are used to varying degrees on farms, but not as much as lepto. One factor that was found in recent surveys that in some cases, the bull is not vaccinated and the bull is a critical part of your fertility planning and should always be vaccinated the same as the cows that he mixes with. So in summary there are three take-home messages. The first one is expansion will increase the risk of disease spread. You can reduce these risks by having a herd health plan. There are three components to the plan. The first one is know your herd health status. The second one is don't buy in disease and the third one is prevent disease spread on your farm. Thank you.